Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of February 16, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now, and it really is active. And if you think that big planets making big moves is fabulous. Well, this is a week for you. I'm going to start with what's happening as we begin this week. Right around Sunday is when Mars will change signs, moving into the sign of Capricorn. Now, it is here that the ancients said that Mars was what we call exalted. And it is just as it sounds. It's Mars able to bring forward its very best qualities, able to be especially focused and strategic, self-knowing, but then acting from that place with intention and clarity and purpose. There is a sense with this of Mars being able to help us to tap into an inner reserve, a deep reserve within us, and help us to understand what really matters. What is it that we really want to achieve? What is it that we really want to live whom is it that we want to be in a larger sense? What is it that we understand our legacy to be? Now, these are all qualities of the sign of Capricorn, and Mars here helps us to hone in on these very things, to find our answers and dedicate ourselves fully to their actualization. Remember, Mars is ultimately knowing yourself completely, owning your energy fully, and then acting from that place and having a point of focus so that your actions actually count for something. Not only do they allow you to live your truth, but they allow you to be effective in the way that you desire to be. The energy of Capricorn is one of success, but success doesn't mean a whole lot if it isn't connected to your unique definition of success. I like to say when I do a type of reading called a life purpose reading, you can have all the riches, all the whatever in the world, right? All the stuff in the world. But if you are not feeling truly at peace with yourself, truly connected to yourself, if you're not feeling like you are in your truth, it really matters very little, if at all. All these external things that tell us that we are successful pale in comparison to the peace that comes from aligning ourselves, our actions with that inner truth that we know ourselves to be. Well, it is Mars now that's gonna help us to get in touch with these very truths, our unique definition of success, one that's gonna be meaningful to us, understanding what's worth achieving, but also what's worth not. That is an important part of the journey as well. That is a part of how focus is cultivated and helping us to understand more deeply, ultimately, what it is that we are going for in a higher sense. Think about legacy. That is something that is strongly associated with Capricornian energy. Legacy is ultimately, on the one hand, what we leave behind. It's part of our immortality. But it's also something that we build over the course of a lifetime. And it is how what it is that we build or share or create, what we put out into the world, well, that is what we become known for in a larger sense as well. It's what we leave behind, but also the larger reputation that we hold. Well, with Mars, we are able to get more honest about that. We're able to understand more deeply if our actions are actually aligning with that larger picture, that sense of destiny, that sense of direction or not. And right about now with Mars in this part of the sky, it becomes easier to align with that higher, more loving vision. Sometimes we have all kinds of motivations. We all are very complicated people. We all have all the planets within us and sometimes they play well together, sometimes not as much. Sometimes there are different parts of us that want different things. But then there are times when we feel like we're able to focus more, like more of us is coming together to move ourselves in a direction that we desire to go in a higher sense, not just what we want in the immediacy or that we want in terms of our instant gratification or distraction, but what it is that we're truly hoping to create and be known for, putting something out there or being someone that we can feel good about, that we can be proud of. 
and it is in consistent action in that direction, in alignment with that vision, well, not only is that success, but that is also how we earn our own self-respect. And that is what Mars and Capricorn is going to invite us to do. Own fully whom it is that we most see ourselves to be, most want ourselves to be, and to act from that place with that integrity in order to earn self-respect. And when you have that, that is unshakable. And it is also undeniable to the people around you. Now, what else is happening this week? Right around Monday is Mercury goes retro. Here we are again. This is the first Mercury retrograde to take place in 2020. Now, whereas Mars in Capricorn is exalted, it is Mercury in Pisces that the ancient said was in fall, meaning that it is in the sign that is opposite its rulership. The opposite sign to Pisces is Virgo. It is in the sign of Virgo that Mercury is not only um, in domicile, which is at home, but also it is exalted, meaning that it's able to bring forward its very best qualities. And so now we have Mercury opposite that. And so Mercury is not going to be very strong here. It is here that when Mercury moves into the sign of Pisces, we already can feel like we're in a Mercury retrograde. And then you add the Mercury retrograde. As we start this week, Mercury standing still in the sky and then officially going retro right on Monday. And this energy will be active for the next oh, three weeks or so. Even though once we get into March, we're going to have a little bit of a dip of Mercury into the sign of Aquarius. That's where Mercury will stand still and then officially go direct. Mercury in Aquarius plays more nice than it would in Pisces. Now, there is wisdom and purpose to all of it. There's always a reason why the universe places the planets as it does. There's a deeper reason as part of our own unique journeys individually, but collectively as well, to ultimately move us in that higher direction of greater love and greater wisdom. And so here we are. We've got Mercury going retro, and it may be a little bit of a doozy, okay? We are going to have some breakthrough moments, not only this week, but especially in the larger and in the context of the Mercury retrograde season. Mercury will dance with Uranus. I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way. Not yet, not this week. That particular dance won't happen, but we are going to have some beautiful Uranian energy that I'll talk about in just a moment. And so we are going to have these moments of insight and breakthrough. But for the most part, this may not be the time to initiate really big things, to start really big, important changes or chapters. It's a really great time to go over old ground, to look at where it is you've been before, to gather information and experience so that you can be more honest with yourself on a deeper level. Piscean energy can be very deep, very profound. It understands our essential nature of interconnection to everyone and everything. And from there arises compassion. Now, what thoughts actually serve us being compassionate, not only to others, but to ourselves as well? What does it mean to perceive with compassion? And where is it that our words are genuinely compassionate? And where is it that maybe they are oh, rife with all kinds of other manipulations and things going on, that is going to be part of the spiritual lesson for a lot of people out there to ensure that you are thinking and speaking all mercurial things and communicating from a place of clarity, a place of integrity, a place of self-honesty to know your own motives. That is the big blessing of any retrograde. Whenever a planet goes retrograde, it asks us to dig within, to consider how it is that we can integrate the higher end of that energy more deeply within us. And in so doing, get honest with ourselves about where perhaps we've been misusing that energy. So how is it that you've been communicating with others, perhaps people close to you or in a larger sense? And where is it that it is genuinely rooted in the higher qualities within yourself, the essential truths that you know about our nature of compassion and interconnection? And where is it that maybe that hasn't been the case? Where is it that you're ready to see with eyes of greater love? 
and to overcome your own resistance so that you can. All of us, as we move through life, we have all kinds of experiences, right? I was recently in New York. I saw some of this, right, playing out right in front of me with other people. It was a very, very amazing trip. There was so much love for me, and I'm so, so very grateful for it. But if you live in a big city like New York City, you know that sometimes people, they don't always communicate with that sense of being compassionate or, you know, thinking about the feelings of others. Um, I think that's just part of survival when you've got so many energies and so many people in a little space, if you will. So how is it that we can be in these environments and still choose to perceive with compassion and love, but not so much so that we are self-sacrificing of ourselves in ways that ultimately drain us of energy? Where is that balance between communicating with others in a way that can be mutually respectful and mutually empowering, but then at the same time, not allowing that to weaken you. And how do you understand what it means to be strong and what it means to be weak? Those are deeply personal definitions and deeply personal understandings. I'm reminded of, um, actually, to go back to Mars for a second, Mars is our libido, right? And it was Freud who said that everything we do, at least in the first part of his career, later in his career, uh, he uh, came up with some nuances I'll touch on in a moment, but it was for the most part of his career where he believed that everything we do is motivated by libido. So whether you want to understand that as, you know, procreate with another person, to be intimate with another person, He believed that we kind of figure out normally when we're children what it is that's going to make us attractive to other people, what it is that we need to demonstrate, that we need to be in order to uh, garner the attention, garner the desire of others, and then we go about doing that in the belief that it will help us to, uh, to fulfill the libido desire. But what's interesting is that it was later on, late in his career, that he actually identified what he called the self-destruct urge. And this is an urge, just like it sounds, as much as we have this desire within us to create, to move forward, we might also have the desire to not do that, to go kind of like in reverse, um, to not act from a place that is so pro um, creation in any area of life. So this is largely, of course, metaphorical. What it means to be attractive to another person, well, your Mars tells you that, right? What that feels like for you. What do you develop within yourself, right? If you've got, for example, if you've got Mars in an air sign, chances are somewhere along the line in your early life, you learned that You've got to know how to talk to people. You've got to be witty. You've got to be smart if it is that you are going to be appealing to other people. If it is that you have an Earth Mars, well, chances are there was a sense of having a material in your life, right? Making practical gains in your life is how you were going to be able to have that sense of being able to attract people into your life. If you have a fire, since we're on this road, if you've got a fire, It's a lot more about creative energy. It's a lot more about demonstrating boldness and bravery. And if you've got water, it becomes a lot more artistic and intuitive. And these become ways in which, as you develop and demonstrate these qualities, you feel that you are able to attract and bring into your life more of the opportunities to be intimate with others. Now, this is different than the attraction of Venus. Venus is more about worthiness. It's about enjoying your life but Mars is libido. Coming back to the ideas of, uh, of Mercury. Now with Mercury, we are, there's a dog barking outside. I hope that's okay. I don't want to stop here. So with Mercury, we are now being asked to dig more deep on an energetic level. That's the Piscean energy there. We're not going to necessarily find our answers and find our right answers. It is, after all, Mercury is in fall is not necessarily operating at its best. 
However, this is where we get to dig deep and we get to cleanse. We get to cleanse our mind. We get to decide for ourselves ultimately what it is that we want to be thinking about a particular situation, why we've been thinking or communicating the way that we have and how it is ultimately that we can align with higher principles. I actually think it is the station of Mercury that's going to happen in the middle of March. That Mercury dipping into Aquarius, that is going to help us to get in touch with our truth. But right now, it's more a time of allowing ourselves to feel, allowing ourselves to swim through our emotions and all the thoughts that we may have, knowing that we are reaching the place of epiphany in perfect time. And that perfect time, well, we get to glimpse it when we gaze upon the stars. And why do we gaze upon the stars, as Plato said, to cultivate wisdom? We as astrologers, we are so very blessed. We get to stand on the shoulders of some of the most prolific spiritual teachers that have ever walked this planet, who've made the greatest contributions to human understanding, human consciousness, human evolution. From Plato to Ibn Arabi to uh, Alan Leo to J.K. Rowling even, because she was an astrologer before she became a, a big time writer. Uh, this is documented, by the way. I remember uh, watching an old, many years ago, watching an old um, antique roadshow in England and there was somebody there and she had a hand-drawn chart that J.K. Rowling had made for her and she paid J.K. Rowling 20 pounds to do a reading of her natal chart, which J.K. Rowling did. And so she was at Antiques Roadshow wanting to know how much she could get for this hand-drawn charts. And this was way back in 2006 that this show aired. And back then they were telling her she could get 10,000 pounds for it. What could she get for it now? I don't know. But these are the amazing, creative, and spiritual, and really leaders of thoughts whose, whose thoughts have changed the planet. They've changed the world. They changed what it is we understood about the nature of self and the nature of God. These are the shoulders on which we stand, right? I take that so seriously. I think of that as so very important, uh, that stewardship, that responsibility, and that need to operate from a place of ethics as a result. And so Mercury retrograde in the sign of Pisces, what is it for you? What shoulders do you stand on? What is the spiritual significance of whatever it is that you do? And if you feel like there isn't, how are you going to find it? Where are you going to root yourself so you're able to recognize whatever it is you're doing and anything that you may be doing, right? I'm very fortunate. I get to be very obvious about the fact that I get to live a spiritual uh, teaching and a spiritual life, and I get to make that as part of my career. But wherever you are in your life, you can do that. I remember many years ago, what, some over 20 years ago or something, I was working at Walmart, and it was while working at Walmart, that I would have moments where I really felt like something profound and beautiful and incredible happened with a, a customer or with a coworker. Something deeply meaningful happened that rooted me in spiritual principles that helped me to get more deeply honest with myself about my motivations. The emotional work you do, the work that you do to observe your thoughts and to align your thoughts with your higher integrity, that is spiritual work. Our emotions point the way to our spiritual lessons and our spiritual lessons are ultimately, they are there to help us to further embody love and wisdom in this life, to more fully understand ourselves as expressions of higher love and greater wisdom than we were before. It's the emotions that point the way with this very emotional energy of Pisces and Mercury here. This will be very much on our thoughts and very much uh, forward looking. Now I want to add something else, right? This is also an energy of fantasy. 
The energy of faith is also an energy of fantasy, archetypally speaking. And so where is it that we've given in to fantastical thinking? Where is it that we've seen or heard or understood what we wanted rather than what actually was? Rather than what was either rationally or practically conveyed to us, where was it that instead uh, we might have created a story that wasn't necessarily rooted in what was actually either being demonstrated or explained to us. It happens to all of us, hope and desire and fantasy. It is one of the key characteristics of being a human being. It happens to all of us. So if it is that that has happened, this is a chance to check in with ourselves in that as well, to understand more deeply why it was that we perceived what we did and how it is now that we want to move forward. Forward movement will happen with Mercury going direct about three weeks from now, but at least for now, we can be in the moment and we can decide to enjoy the journey. Now, speaking of fantasy, let's talk about something else, something big that's happening as well. And this happens right around Wednesday, and that is a harmonious connection between Jupiter and Neptune. These two planets will be dancing for most of this year as part of the larger theme of this year of 2020 as part of Jupiter in the sign of Capricorn. And so this is important because we are going to have these two planets connecting now and then again in July and then again in October. In about four years time, they will again do this dance and then that dance won't be repeated for about a decade. So it is quite rare. And this is the heightening of fantasy. Now that becomes that much more stronger given the signs that these two planets are in, especially the fact that Neptune is very strong in its home sign right now in the sign of Pisces, but also Jupiter. Jupiter is in Capricorn right now, and this is also a placement for Jupiter that is not strong, where Jupiter is not able to bring forward necessarily its very best uh, qualities. It does bring blessings, absolutely, but the kind of you know unrivaled blessings that Jupiter might have uh, in Pisces or in Sagittarius, we may not see that just yet, but that really is okay. The blessings are still there, absolutely. So I see this energy as very dreamy, very hopeful. It's great if you are a musical person, it's wonderful if you are a spiritual person or if you're in a healing profession. And I know that these can be very broad umbrellas. But if you feel like you are connected to that, whether professionally or personally, this can be a lovely energy to tap into. This can also be an energy of promises made, especially where it comes to matters of career or matters of success. That's where we do want to be a little bit careful. I do love the fact that Mars is exalted in the same sign that Jupiter is in right now because I think that's going to help balance the energy so that it isn't all dreams but that there are some practical things that can take place. But outside of that, when we look just at these two energies of Neptune and Jupiter speaking in their respective signs where they are right now, well, this energy can be uh, one that can have us floating away on belief, on hope. And it is ultimately the counterbalance of questioning that helps us most. But it is important to keep in mind that we've already got Mercury retrograde in Pisces. The sun will move into Pisces as well. Uh, Pisces season will begin right around Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on where you are on the planet. So happy birthday to all the Pisceans out there. But the fact that Pisces season is set to begin also, well, all of that tells me that there'll be a lot of promising energy, a lot of hopeful energy. Where is the counterbalance? Well, I think Mars will provide some counterbalance, which will be great. We need to understand our more practical, um, more earthly and earthbound qualities in order to maximize our spiritual qualities that much more. It's a partnership that we are living. You emphasize one too much over the other, things can get out of balance. And so that sense of balance may be something we need to watch. If people are making you promises or you know wanting something for you or from you, 
it is important to watch. Are we making promises to others? Do we have certain expectations of others that perhaps can't necessarily be met? And where is it that we need to be more honest with ourselves? That might be something that feels not necessarily so clear just yet. And that's okay. It has its wisdom. It has its purpose. And so watch this as well collectively. I do think collectively speaking, we are going to have uh, a lot of like sort of rom-coms being emphasized because that has to do with fantasy. Uh, a lot of whether it's stories, whether it's movies, because movies also fall under this. Anywhere where you are addressing illusion, looking at the illusions or enjoying the illusions, like with film and photography, whether that's digital or you know on the big screen, these are the things that start to be uh, celebrated under energy like this. But these are also where things get confusing, especially when you consider things right now like deep fakes and Photoshop and all of that. Well, we might find ourselves questioning, you know, what is real, what is glamour, what is uh, and what are responsible images, what are grounded, what are not. This may be part of the conversation, um, especially starting now and especially with energy like this. Now, if all of this wasn't enough, as we get to the end of the week, we've got some beautiful energy playing out, thanks to Uranus. So first, right around Friday is when Mars will speak in supreme harmony with Uranus in a type of conversation that astrologers call a trine. It'll be at the very end of the week that the sun will speak in harmony with Uranus in a type of conversation astrologers call a sextile. I just love this. To me, this is lucky. This is things changing in a very fortunate way. Uh, this is a sense of success for all of us in some way and things changing in a way that we really like, a lucky break, if you will. Again, because of Mercury, be mindful of contracts or making agreements that you know maybe are a little bit tricky to stick to. But for all that, this can absolutely be a time of truly feeling as if life and luck and success and even destiny are on your side, making changes with you really, really quickly. And yes, helping you to feel as if things are changing almost magically so. But remember, magic means more when it is grounded and when it's followed up by your practical action. What I love about this week for us, well, look, there's a lot here. It's the start of Pisces season, so there's that. A start of a time when we tend to start to lean towards more spiritual matters and matters of compassion already. That compassion, dreamy energy is going to be really, really high with a week like this. But at the same time, we've got this beautiful sense of practicality and we've got this sense of brilliance that changes our life in practical ways. We've got this sense of us being propelled into the future and with all that harmonious energy at the end of the week, well, chances are a lot of us are feeling ourselves moving towards, working towards, and glimpsing a future that we love very much. Well, thank you so much for watching. You might have noticed Biggie wanted to jump in. I was so happy about that. One of the best things about being back is the fact that Biggie gets to be in the video, but he's really like, you know, sort of rolled up behind me now. Um, but I'm really grateful that he got a chance to, to be on camera. I'm a very proud dog mom over here. But what do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. So I've got two really brilliant announcements uh, and big announcements. So one is something that I started to touch on last week. Uh, last week, with the charts, the new partnership I have with Cosmogram, I love these people at Cosmogram. They've been so, so very lovely with me. Um, and so I was telling them that, you know, hey, some people were having problems with the code, the discount code. Now that discount code for 50% off, that was set to expire uh, on Valentine's Day on February 14. But because there were people who reached out to me and said, hey, I tried to use the... Um, 
the discount code and it wasn't working. It is now fixed and Cosmogram uh, in their generosity, thank you so much to them. They have agreed to extend the discount right to the end of the month, to the end of February. And ever since they did this, like ever since they addressed the issues, it has been so wonderful. So many people have been contacting me and saying, I got my report. I love my report. And that just means so much to me because a lot of work went into this. Okay. A lot of work went into these reports. Um, this is me actually going through your chart and it is a computer generated printout. So what happens is, and I'll try to put it up here somewhere so that you can see the process. Cause I did it myself on my phone. But basically what happens is you can actually go onto the website, you put in your birth data, and then you go on to the next page and it's there that you can actually put in the discount code and you'll see the discount code 50% off applied immediately. And then from there you can choose how it is that you want to pay, whether you want to use your credit card or whether you want to use PayPal, totally up to you. All of that is handled by Cosmogram. They are the ones uh, who have the setup. Um, I don't have the software. I don't have a way to calculate it. I provided the interpretations. And so basically there are some 780 possible combinations. Okay. And so if you think about it, your ascending sign, there are 12 different ascending signs. There are 12 different midheaven signs, 12 different sun signs, and then all the possible combinations of aspects that can happen with your sun to other planets. It is all those sections that I wrote, and then they have the software where they generate the report, and then they send it to you. You get it within a few hours, and when they send that off to you, it'll be likely be at least 30 pages. Most are more than 30 pages. It depends on how active your chart is, of course, but you can expect to get a report that details exactly uh, what the different placements are in your chart and what it means according to my interpretation. So this really was a labor of love uh, and it is a dream come true to be able to offer this to you. It was, you know, something way back when I was a baby astrologer starting out, I dreamed of doing. And so it's just such a privilege now to have people reading it and loving it and telling me about it. So thank you. Thank you so much to all of you who are. And again, um, they have made it so that it is very easy to use the discount code now. And until the end of the month, you get 50% off and then you enjoy you enjoy it. There's also a sample reading there of Meghan Markle. And again, it's in my interpretation. So you can see if Meghan Markle ordered this chart, what would it look like? What would the reading look like? What would her PDF uh, report look like? You'll see it. So you know exactly what you're getting before you even order. And again, I hope you absolutely love it. And thank you to Cosmogram. And thank you to all of you guys for your love and your trust. My other big news this week is Prayers to the Sky, my next book coming out March 15. I hope you guys love that as well. Lots of people have already been getting their advanced copies and posting them and posting pics of it on Instagram and I've been sharing them with you guys. Thank you for the wonderful uh, feedback that the book has been getting. And so it is Prayers to the Sky that is now available for pre-order on Amazon. And what happens is it all goes on through Amazon. You go there, uh, you say that you want the pre-order. And then from what I understand and my own experience from pre-ordering books is that once the book launches, you will automatically be sent the link. And it's at that time that Amazon uh, will charge whatever your form of payment is. I don't know anything about that. I don't have any of your credit cards or nothing like that. All of that is handled by Amazon. When the book comes out in March, it will also be available in a, a hard copy as well, in a paperback, a soft cover rather. But it is only the ebook that is available for pre-order. So that's kind of how it is right now. So if you get the pre-order, you're going to get a gift. And I think you're going to like this gift. What I have decided to do um, is I have a study group that is uh, being sold on my website for $60. And the study group is essentially a series of 10 um, Q&A, 10 get-togethers, so 10 classes, if you will. And what happens is at the new moon, 
we get together and we're going to do this for each of the planets. So all together, I think it's going to be 10 or 11 all together. But each study group that happens once a month at the new moon, well, it will be then that we will not only talk about the planet of that given uh, class, but also I will answer any Q&A or follow-up questions that you have. And uh, we'll do a, a little meditation, a little prayer together. So you can see how it is that I apply the, the wisdom and the knowledge and what I present to you in the book. So you get to see how it is lived in real time with me. Now, this class pass, this uh, study group pass is, um, like I said, it's valued at $60. You can buy it separately. But if you get the pre-order and you forward us the receipt, because I don't know what you're ordering from Amazon if you don't forward us the receipt, but you forward us the receipt and you pre-order this before the book is officially available, well, you will get free access to this study group. If you can join us live, great. If you can't join us live, you'll get the download, the video download to keep and learn from and watch as much as you want forever and ever. And so I hope that you guys really enjoy that. I'm really looking forward to that. Now, it'll be on the new moon, like every new moon starting this month. So we've got the first study group coming up really soon. Uh, it's right around the corner. So it'll be either at the very end of this week or the beginning of next week, because it is at the very beginning of next week that we have a new moon taking place, uh, which I think is uh, going to be so fabulous that I'll talk about next week. But it is going to be with this new moon that we're going to start. Now, every new moon, if you're a superstar, you know that I do a hangout where I answer your questions and we look at charts and then we do a meditation together. So the study group will happen on the same day, uh, not right after the other, but like, you know, I'll take a little break and then we'll have the next one. Everything will be scheduled. You'll know when the study group is happening at least uh, some 24 to 48 hours in advance. You'll get all the links. You'll be able to join me on Zoom or in the dedicated study group on Facebook. If you like, it'll be live streamed there as well. And so it is going to be the same day so that people who are superstars who are also in the study group can find it kind of seamless. We have these uh, hangouts and the study group at different times each month to take into account the different time zones that people are in. And so at some point you will get to join us live no matter what time zone you are in. And of course the uh, download will be available as well. Study group coming up, we're gonna start with the sun, the chapter on the sun. So even if you don't have the book yet, that's okay. You can still join us and uh, that is going to be the gift. You get these series of downloads and classes to enjoy. So pre-orders on Amazon link is in the description below. I've got lots of events coming up online and in real life IRL. So Synchronicity University earlier today we had a wonderful class on Lunar Mansions. It is now available for sale and it is also available as a download to the people who couldn't join us live. I hope you absolutely love it. We went through all 28 of the Lunar Mansions, went way over time, but it was so much fun. Next week we will have the final actual class of uh, the winter session, which is chart rulerships. So we'll be looking at chart rulerships. That'll be a lot of fun as well, a specific uh, way of understanding the chart and how the chart is interconnected. And then the week after that, we're going to have our bonus class, our Q&A. So you can still sign up. You can get all these videos as downloads, all the classes that have already taken place. And of course, you can sign up for individual classes as well and I look forward to seeing you in class. Now, in-person events, lots of in-person events coming up very, very soon. I'm gonna miss Biggie so much, there he is. I'll be on the road uh, through most of the spring. And so at the end of March, I will be in Istanbul, and I will be there as part of Astrology Days, a wonderful weekend of learning with some truly brilliant astrologers. Many of them are my friends. Uh, so we're going to have a lot of fun together. And then all of us are going to be learning astrology as well. And then the following uh, weekend, I will be in Bangkok, Thailand, one of my very favorite cities on the planet. I'm really looking forward to that as well. I'll be looking at astrology and 
uh, holistic health and a lot of the stuff that is available in the body and the cosmos. Uh, my most recent book that came out, uh, a lot of that will be part of what we talk about and so much more. You can come for one day, you can come for all three uh, days or two, whatever works for you and your schedule. I know there's lots of friends and fans out in Thailand, so I look forward to meeting you guys as well. Then I'm going to get a little bit of a break, and then on May, I am hitting the road. First, I will be in Costa Rica as part of astrologyrisingcostarica.com. This is set to be a huge event. People are still signing up. Um, and so the sooner you sign up, the cheaper it is to go. World-renowned, brilliant astrologers will be joining me as part of this adventure. We're going to have the whole resort to ourselves, so it'll all be like-minded people. There's a wonderful, very full schedule that is taking place. You'll have options of the different things that you might want to do, the different talks you might want to go to. So some of the brilliant astrologers will be joining me. Of course, I was Kaipacha. Kaipacha is uh, with New Paradigm Astrology. He is the official organizer of the event. He's taking care of everything. And then we've got uh, one of my very favorite people, Rick Levine, a brilliant astrologer, a legendary astrologer. And we've got uh, the really amazing, uh, world-renowned evolutionary astrologer, Maurice Fernandez, who will be there as well. We've got some other incredible people uh, that I'm really looking forward to getting to know more. Uh, Sol Janison, who is uh, from Norway, widely respected astrologers, including uh, Julia Simas from CIA, uh, Christina Claudel from Radiant Astrology. We've got Ari Moshe. We've got Timothy Halloran. So lots and lots of wonderful uh, events going on as well. Spiritual events, things that everybody's doing together and learning from all these brilliant people. So just visit astrologyrisingcostarica.com and it is there that you actually can look at the schedule. You'll understand what your days are going to be like and all the amazing things that we are going to be learning together. And I look forward to meeting you in Costa Rica. And then after that, I'm heading to Toronto, my hometown. Uh, it is there that I will be speaking with Astrology Toronto. Uh, with them, we'll be looking at past lives in the astrology chart, if I remember correctly. It's an a afternoon presentation that I will be doing. And then Memorial Day weekend, I will be in Seattle uh, with the Norwalk Conference, which is just about sold out if it isn't already. So if you want to go, I would really encourage you to uh jump on that to make sure you get your tickets. Um, but that's going to be wonderful. Again, world-renowned astrologers are going to be there. Uh, so you get a chance to learn from a lot of different people. And then I will head to Las Vegas. I'll be back in Vegas for the last week of May, the last Tuesday and the last Saturday. That is when I will be with the NCGR Stargazers group. So lots of chances to meet friends and fans and to get hugs and selfies. I'll have a small number of books with me wherever it is that I go, so you'll get a chance to get a signed book as well. And then I'll take a break for the summer, and then in September I will be in Colorado. So looking forward to being in Colorado as part of the ESAR conference. Again, a huge conference, world-renowned astrologers. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. And I think that's it. I'm looking forward to meeting friends and fans uh, in person, but also in the study group that's coming up very, very soon. So Prayers to the Sky, available on Amazon right now. And there's Biggie having a good little sleep. And thank you. Thank you so much for your love, for your trust, all of it. It just means so much to me. Uh, thank you for sharing your sacred journey with me. And thank you for watching. And until we connect again, take care. And it'll be a great week. Enjoy.